So today we're looking at reading the time from clocks. It's often something that either you can do or you can't do. Um, and it can be a really difficult thing to learn. So if you find that difficult, that's okay. And that's very normal because there's so much information to try and take in. So this will be really helpful for that. But then also we've got some brilliant challenges that, that we're gonna move on to, particularly the rotated clock. Really look forward to seeing how you get on with that rotated clock. Um, we're gonna start by having a look at some of the work you did yesterday. Well, we have got so much, so much coming on this video. I really am looking forward to this. Uh, starting with a little recap from yesterday. Now, again, if you didn't do any of these questions, just watch along and that's fine. No, no pressure to, uh, other than that. Um, but I, I wanted to show them from yesterday. So some of you all will have been doing this. Order these lengths of time from the shortest to the longest. Now, I would start off by thinking, well, which unit of time can I put them all in most easily? like a middle one of those units. And so this was one of the first things that I'd, I would have done, or I could suggest, of, of thinking, well, minutes, if I get that into hours, it's gonna be easier to compare. And then weeks, let's see if we can get that in days, and, and hours in days. So again, we've, we've got 72 hours, well, that's three days. Half a week, three and a half days, and uh, 90 hours, is 5,400 minutes. If I do 5,400, how many 60s in 5,400? 5,400 divided by 60, 90 hours. Okay, now I can maybe kind of start comparing. So three days is, it looks like the, the smallest. Now remember, 72 hours and 90 hours, so they're the same. So 90 hours must be more than this. This has got to be the smallest. Uh, then three and a half days, and then I've got to think this 90 hours, how does this fit in? So 72 hours is three days, 90 hours, well, that's another 18 hours from 70, from three days, 72 hours, um, another 18 hours. Now, 18 out of 24 hours is three quarters then um, of a day. So ordering them, well, we've got uh, 5,400 minutes is three and three quarter days. So the order, four days the longest. Um, three and three quarter days, two, three and a half days, three days. So shortest, the longest, of course, you need to order them and the opposite way around. Also, I just had to throw this task in and I had to show it today as well. What is the date 400 hours into the new year? So imagine the parties are going on New Year's Eve. Um, now, and what, what's the time? So let's have, a, let's have a look at this. Well, at the absolute start of the new year, it's the 1st of January. Uh, and it's it's just turned midnight on the on the first of January, um, so twenty four hours into the new year, it will actually be the second of January. Like we don't start the new year saying this this is zero, and then after twenty four hours we say this is now one. We're now on the first of January because there's been one day that's passed. So it's slightly different than other forms of number. So what's the date twenty four hours into the new year? Well, it's the second of January. So what about 240 hours into the new year? I could easily think that, oh, well, it'll be the 10th. That's 10 days. Now it is 10 days, but remember, we don't start from zero, we start from one. So 240 hours, that will actually be the 11th of January. So anyway, let's get to our question. 400 hours? Well, 400 hours divided by 24, that's how many hours in a day? So that means that will, there'll be 400 hours into the new year, that'll be 16 days that have passed and two thirds of a day. Um, so with 16 days after that point on the 1st of January. So we'll be on the 17th of January and we'll be two thirds of the way through the 17th of January. So what is two thirds of 24 hours we'd have to figure? Well, it is uh, 16 hours, so 1600 hours or I uh, could call that 4 p.m. Now, again, don't worry if you've not done that, you've not followed that, but I, I wanted to come back to that. I also wanted to show you a thing that I think is amazing about time. Now, and, and time is just really useful for showing something. It's really, really difficult for anyone to actually properly understand how big really big numbers are and how they're different. So sometimes I might hear the news and they might say uh, a thousand people or a million or a billion or a, or a million pounds and a billion pounds. And it's hard for me to imagine how much that is. And time can be really helpful for actually being able to picture things. So have a look at this. 1,000 seconds is 16 minutes and 40 seconds. Now, if you want to pause the video, but what I'm gonna show you in a minute is, is how much a million seconds is. So maybe have a guess. If 1,000 seconds is, is just under 17 minutes, how long do you think a million seconds might be? 
Okay, let, let me show you. It's actually 11 days and 14 hours. So that's a million seconds. 11 days, 14 hours. You might not be that surprised yet. Okay. What about a billion seconds? What do you think? So a million seconds, so a million's a lot, isn't it? I think million, a big number. A million, 11 days, 14 hours. Well, what about a billion seconds? Just if you want to pause. If not, don't. But um, how long do you think a billion would be? I'm going to show you. I think this is amazing. 31 years, eight months and eight days. That is a billion seconds. I thought it wouldn't be anywhere near that much when I knew a million seconds was 11 days, 14 hours. Look at that difference. Now, again, if you want to find something amazing, see if you can find out a trillion seconds, how long that is in comparison. Helpful to see that difference between numbers of different sizes. Anyway, the main content today, the star of the show, are our broken clocks. Um, so learning to read time is, is a thing that it, there's lots of different steps and sometimes it's helpful to take them off. And also there's some brilliant challenges you can do with broken clocks. My goodness, I am looking forward to this one. Um, so reading clocks, so four o'clock. Um, I, I sometimes, when I'm introducing this to children, I separate the colours. So we have different colours for the minute hand and the hour hand. Now, we of course know that the hour hand is shorter, the minute hand is longer. And there, four o'clock, no problem. The hour hand is pointing straight at the four. And 12, well, that, that represents an o'clock time. Now, of course, we've got this key idea. When we get to half past four, the minute hand moves from four to 4.30. But so does the hour hand. The hour hand is now halfway between four and five. Um, because it's it's half past four. Then when we get to uh, 4.45 or quarter to five, um, the hour hand now is nearly at the five. Now it's not 5.45, it's still 4.45 because it's before five, it's between four and five. Um, but then, um, but so, so it's 4.45 still. Okay, so I want you to have a look at this example here. Um, and th these are three common wrong answers I'll get if I ask children, what's the time? Um, the correct time here is it's actually 2.45. Um, I wonder if you can explain the mistakes. What mistakes have the children made here? Um, pause the video. Okay, let, let me see if I can explain the thinking here. And this thinking is very understandable. We think nine, the hour must be nine. Look, it's pointing at the nine. And how many minutes passed? 14 minutes. What's wrong with that? Well, of course, this one's the hour hand. And this one's the minute hand. And we switched around the hour hand and the minute hand there. Um, 3.45, I've got the minutes right, 45 minutes. But of course, it's not 3.45, even though the hour hand is close to the three, because we've not got to three o'clock yet. We're between two and three. Um, whereas 2.09, again, we've got the hour right this time. It's not three o'clock yet. But of course, that's not nine minutes. That's um, nine lots of five minutes, 45 minutes. See how there's so much to get your head around there when, you, when you're learning to read clocks. We're going to have a go at broken clock. And this time, we're all in the same colour hand. So remember to look out for those uh, those hour hands, which are shorter. OK, so here's a broken clock. I've given you the hour hand. Um, what time could it be? Pause the video. Have a think. What, what time do you think it is? OK, let's have a look now. Of course, you can only estimate here because the hour hand will give you a good clue. Uh, I thought it'd be about 10 past 10. So can you see the hour hand is just ever so slightly ahead of 10. It can't be 10 o'clock, otherwise it would be pointing more directly there. Um, 10 past 10. Often, if you see um, if you see businesses trying to sell clocks, they will put the time to be 10 past 10. It's it's perhaps it's like an attractive time for for, for us to look at um, for, on, on clocks for some reason. How about this one? On this broken clock, you've only got the hour hand. What time could it be? Pause the video. I wonder what you went for this time. Um, I thought it'd be about 5.55. You see, it's ever so slightly short of six o'clock. So about how much would that be? I thought it'd be about five minutes before six o'clock. It isn't 6.55, of course, because even though it's really close to that six, it is not got there yet. It's between five and six. OK, so there's a hand missing from each clock. For each clock, what time could it be? And there's a trick question. I wonder if you can find it. Uh, pause the video and have a go. Right, if you're ready, let's have a look. 
Um, so I thought that first one, maybe again, it could be 11.55. It's not quite 12 o'clock yet, so it's got to be 11 something, but it's very close. Um, I thought this one, maybe 20 past two, because I know it, it would be two o'clock there. It's not quite half two. I thought about 20 past looks about right. Uh, the bottom left one, I thought about 7.45. So that's seven. This is eight. It's not quite at eight yet. I thought that was about a quarter of an hour until eight o'clock there. The bottom right one, of course, is a trick one because you're given the minute hand. So it is quarter to something. Um, it's 45 minutes gone in that hour, but we just don't know. It, it, it could be quarter. It could be quarter to 12, quarter to one, quarter to two, any time. The hour hand tells us um, about when the time is in the day. We can fairly well tell the time just by looking at the hour hand. The minute hand just gives that little bit more precision for how many minutes have gone past. Okay. This is one of my favourites. Um, it's rotated clock. I say that a lot. I, I, I know that I say that a lot of my favourite tasks. But th this one's a great one. Okay, so taking all the numbers off this clock and it's been rotated. Now, I want you to think, what time could it be? Or what time couldn't it be? Are there any times, you know, well, I definitely know it couldn't be this time. And I know it couldn't be that time. Uh, so what time could it be? What time couldn't it be? See if you can come up with some possibilities of things, particularly if you think, well, I know it can't be this or it can't be that or it can't be the other. Could you work out what time it actually is? Pause the video, see what you can figure out. Okay, and I'm going to give you some suggestions. And if you want to, pause the video at any time if you want some more thinking time. I want you to think, well, which one's the hour hand? Which one's the minute hand? And... Can we can we work that out? Because that's really important. Now, we could say, well, it's definitely not like five o'clock because the angle's wrong. It also can't be three o'clock. Looks about right. The angle looks about right for three o'clock, doesn't it? It can't be three o'clock because this is the hour hand and the hour hand is not at an o'clock time. But how far past is it? Think about that. Now, again, if you want to pause the video, you can do. Um, but actually, I can look at this clock and I know it. this must be half past. It must be half past time because look, that is halfway along here. So it's got to actually be a half past. So if it's a half past, I'm going to rotate the clock so that the minute hand is actually at half past. There. Can you tell what time it is now? It is half past eight. <sighs> ah, that is one of my favourites. So you'll find today's task by clicking on the blue link underneath the video. Um, if you really feel like you're getting your head around uh, reading time from clocks and those missing hand questions and so on, have a go at task A and or maybe task B. Um, now, equally, you might prefer to have a go at the extend task, which is more on the lines of the rotated clock type uh, activity. The answers to that are here and the actual task itself is an enriched task which you'll find uh, which you'll find just here so uh, I'll not explain that have a read if you want a little help with that you click on the get getting started prompt as well um, and uh, just to say as well if you want to check your answers uh, for some of the questions um, particularly for these for, for task a rather than actually me providing answers I thought you might want to have a go at the interactive clock so have a look at the at the way that you've drawn your clock and where you've put your hands and then actually compare that so you, so you might let, let's say you've put your clock and you've pointed the hands like this and you wanted to check if that's correct if that time is about right then press show and that will help to for you to, to see that and this could be a useful tool as well um, i hope you've really enjoyed today i hope you've got a lot from it i'll be back again tomorrow